All right, this is my Raspberry Pi installed on my Honda S2000. I've got a bunch of pictures to accompany where I'll give the breakdown each step, but basically, 12 gauge, this is house wiring. It's not braided, it's 12 gauge solid metal house wiring. It runs behind the battery, across through the air conditioning unit, which from this angle is really easy to see, but standing straight up on the engine bay, it kind of tucks behind all these pipes. There will be some more cleanup done. I just got finished running all this. Took about an hour start to finish to do everything. Get that behind the brake booster. Alright. Oh. Just behind the firewall where you see the loop to loop. That's where the wire goes into the inside of the car. It'd be real convenient if I had a hole on that side. Take the key out for a second. The wire runs behind the dashboard, behind the stereo, goes into a 140 watt power inverter. This used to house an airbag. Not gonna have my passenger sign a consent form that they're not protected by an airbag when they get in my car. Now the Element 14 box surrounding the Raspberry Pi, or better yet, that's cut out and I have it stuck inside of. That is not anyway trying to be a ghetto case that's until my case comes in to make sure that nothing metal on the pie touches anything inside the dash and grounds out so don't think that in the future this install that's how it's going to look i'm actually looking to weld up a bracket to actually mount the pie to have the wires meet up here in the center of the pie mounted permanently on the board well the mount permanent the board detached because i do plan on bringing the pie inside Hooking it to the computer for all the programming to do on it. So having it permanently installed in the dash is not an option. I'm not sitting in my driveway, SSH and in with the laptop. Put it on my big screen in my house. Now, touchscreen works. I have it unplugged, so I have more juice going to other peripherals because it's not calibrated. Touch here, the arrow hits here. Touch anywhere else, and it's off the screen. You can learn how to configure the calibration for the touch screen this thing would be ready to go but since I don't have a touch screen I have a keyboard I also used the Android remote but I couldn't record this video if I was using the phone as a remote so I'm gonna stick to this keyboard for now pretty cheap I wanna say it was 26 bucks with shipping and ham handling off amazon.com it uses Bluetooth go ahead and wake my screen up here and the glare on the screen is from the screen protector. It doesn't actually look like that to people sitting in the car, but for some reason the screen protector causes that glare to pick up on this camera. All right. Now I've got videos, files, I'll start there. A little background I've set. Got my, my passport mounted which is 320 gig external hard drive one day that should be a terabyte now also I'm mounting my Nexus 7 on top of this screen on my dash and most likely it'll strictly be for GPS seeing that there's no native GPS app running on the Pi Once again, I apologize for this glare. Should have put my roof up. Okay. Doesn't seem to help much. A little bit. Now there's a touchpad on the Bluetooth remote and just made myself out a lot. Okay. The touchpad was working, although it's not too effective. It was working just fine before. Oh there it is.
but it's much easier to hit the arrows and the enter button than play around with the touchpad. Go to videos. This is my My Passport. Kill all that noise. Just some videos I have preloaded. That's good enough, is any? Oh yeah. Would help if I had a stereo on. Oh, I don't have my tether on on my phone, which I can't turn on because I'm recording. But as soon as I flip my tether on, I'll pick up a, a IP address and that'll let Android remote run. I don't use a wireless access point inside the car because basically I have two stereo amps, one pushing highs, one pushing subwoofers. And then I have a power inverter pushing a Raspberry Pi with a TV screen. A little too much juice coming off of a battery barely bigger than a uh, one found in a motorcycle, uh, motorbike. Trunk's incomplete. I have to finish off this last board here. It's going to encapsulate this amp. So that's about it. That's the core audio setup I have in my S2000. Just wanted to share with you guys what I have going on. See if it can help one of you get the project you plan on putting together. Oh, I do highly recommend in the corner here I have a uh, capacitor. Highly recommend installing a capacitor to a subwoofer system. I have capacitors built into the Raspberry Pi. Well, into the power inverter going to the Raspberry Pi. So, if I'm at a store and I shut my car down. Let's see. Definitely need to overclock it. It is sluggish. But, I have a 2.1 amp power source. Uh, power plug to give the power to the Pi that I bought from Amazon, Amazon Basics and there's a short in it. The second you plug it in it sounds like a taser gun going off through my speakers. So I have my power cable for my Galaxy Nexus power in the Pi right now which is one amp output. I do need to get another mm -hmm. power cord that is the 2.1 amp because that pushes this uh, user interface menu and all with zero lag. Which once you get into an interface, I get into my movies, it goes pretty smooth. But when you click on movies, it takes a few seconds to load up. And now to show you 
just throw on a video real quick. doesn't shut the Raspberry Pi off starting the engine. Like I said, I hope it gives some of the people some ideas on how to go about doing this if this was in their plans and uh, just to share back with the community what I've gotten. I want to thank Sam again for the build of Raspberry MC. It's a, a awesome operating system, and it's in its beginning stages. We're on RC4 now, and things are running smooth. I've had the, basically the same function, functionality I'm having now, even with RC3, even though some people are having issues. I've been using this as a daily drive um, car audio piece, audio center, media center, for about three, four weeks now, and no problems whatsoever. Every once in a while, I have issues with the my passport being recognized and showing the videos when I was running RC3 but that seems to be fixing RC4 even though I do not mount the external hard drive into the Pi boot still still not having too much success with uh, booting it right when it's hooked up and I think another issue with that is not having a proper shutdown sometimes I go to the shutdown menu and it shuts down perfect sometimes I go to the shutdown menu and it just goes to a black screen and stops usually that's when I boot up and start having uh, mounting issues so as long as you wait for the PC or the Pi to completely boot, then you plug in your external hard drive, you should be good to go.